Hey friends, we all know that guitars are made of wood, but how exactly does this beautiful piece of finished cedar come from a big hunk of original raw cedar like this? Well, in today's video, I'm gonna enlist the help of my friend Marshall Bernay, our friend the neighborhood luthier, to help us understand that process. Guitars are such a beautiful end product, of course, that is, you know, it's a tool, it's designed to make beautiful sounds, but I think often, at least I can admit for myself, I neglect the amazing process that uh, happens from being a tree to this magnificent piece of art. So I want to pick your brain, Marshall. Tell us, how does this happen? Can you enlighten us? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's pretty simple. You, you start with a tree and you cut it down and cut away everything that isn't a guitar. <laughs> and then the guitar just appears. <laughs> right, yeah, you just have to find the form inside the wood. I never knew that. Yeah, it's easy. 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 I never knew it was so simple. Sure. Want to hold my wood? <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> but come on, I mean, look, look at these two things. I mean, I think it sounds like it's a simple thing to say that a guitar is made of wood, but if you told me to take a chunk of wood and turn it into a guitar, you wouldn't get something that pretty. <laughs> yes, so there's a lot going on in terms of finding the actual form inside of the wood. So, you know, for us, that's really important. And honestly, I don't like to go out and cut trees down because it's dangerous. Huh. And so I typically buy my wood pre-cut. Okay. So when we start off with a giant piece of wood, uh, you know, we're, we're starting off with a tree where we have to go out and, you know, they never conveniently put the trees right by the road. Ugh. I know. So oftentimes, unless you have a known area, you're going on a many, many mile long hike wow. to find the right tree. And, and you've done this. I have, yeah. This is something I didn't realize before. Uh, we were talking to samurai guitarists, and and during that meeting, uh, you mentioned that your dad and you actually have gone out and chopped some wood down. I didn't realize this. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I I, have, I harvested spruce. That piece is uh, wood that my father and Bob Rock or Robert Rock harvested wow. uh, way back in the '70s. Which actually, that guitar is made from this wood. <laughs> Incredible. I love the see, just seeing the connection. So, okay, can you enlighten us and, and me as well? Uh, can you guide us through the process? We have this wood, you, you go find it in the forest, you cut it down. What happens? What are the stages of the wood? Maybe we can go to your shop even and, and see the process. Yeah, absolutely. So the stages of getting from a giant block of wood to this is basically we're gonna uh, break it into smaller billets, mm -hmm. various lengths. We're gonna resaw it and then we're gonna end up with a wedge piece, and then we have to join that up and then thickness it. So there's a few steps, but the steps are actually pretty big. Gotcha. So right now you're talking just about the soundboard, since that's our piece of cedar Absolutely. from that big piece of cedar. Of course, there are other types of wood on a guitar, many types of wood, which add together to make the finished product. Also other materials like metal and, and things, but. Yeah, a little bit of metal, a little bit of cow, a little bit of yeah. bug. But speaking of just the, the cedar part, the soundboard, which is arguably the most important part of a guitar. Yeah, what are the most, right? Yeah. Uh, so let's let's go to the shop and let's watch this process. Yeah, absolutely. Let's go. Cool. Okay, so we're in Marshall's shop now, and I've been walking through the shop for years, and I've always seen this room full of potential guitars. Yes. Full of raw wood. Uh, so tell us about it. These are billets that I actually harvested out of the Wasatch Forest. Wow. Yeah. Uh, we ended up getting a logging permit, uh, went out there, we ended up getting one Engelman, whacked it with the back of an axe, listened to it ring, uh, and when it rang, we then checked the grain to make sure it was straight uh, to the first branch at about 75 feet. I gotta pause you. You checked to make sure that it rang, that just the tree itself. Yeah. I thought I always thought that the the raw tree itself it was it was just you know it's just wood and later on you finesse it to make it sound good. Oh no, we before we put an ounce of effort into it, we'll take a back of an axe and whack it. What? And if you hear the the tree go thunk, it's not going to be a good tree. If you hear it go boom, it's going to sound good. Okay, my mind is blown. <laughs> yeah. So we cut it down, cut it into two foot lengths or a little bit more than two foot lengths. Uh, used a, a fro, which is basically a splitting wedge, to knock it down into these sections. 
so that way these are all split faces and you can see that there's almost no run out. Mm -hmm. This will give you the nicest, smoothest, glossiest appearance on the guitar along with the highest level of strength. So what you're saying is even at this stage you can already predict the potential guitar based on the potential of the wood. I, I always, oh, absolutely. That's incredible. I, I really always thought that like this is just kind of is what it is and it's, it's all the art form that takes it to where the guitar ends up. Oh no, we, we start off with prime musical wood that starts off as musical itself before we decide to make something musical out of it. You don't want any of those tone deaf trees. Right, no, no, no. I, want, I don't want the trees that you have to tune the radio for them. Totally. But this one, just if I scratch lightly, and you listen up here. Oh my god. Can so. you get that on camera? <laughs> that is unreal. Today's video is brought to you by Classical Guitar Pro. That's my brand new online classical guitar course, which is six hours, 53 videos. It's a whole curriculum designed to teach you what you would normally learn in the first six months to a year of classical guitar lessons. So if you want to learn classical guitar but are stuck uh, struggling reading music or struggling to learn the techniques, check out classicalguitar-pro.com to learn more. Okay, so this is the, st we're still at the quite the beginning stage. There's right. a long way to go to before it becomes a guitar. Right. What and, happens next? Well, then you carry all these out, you gather as many of your friends as you've suckered in. So that's step one. After that? We're gonna saw it down into billets like this. Is this gonna be a soundboard? This is going to be a soundboard. This, this is, is the a, two halves, right? Yeah, this is a spruce top. So uh, this would have been the outside of the tree. So it would go together about then, like that. You just like kind of like cut out the hourglass shape and then that becomes your, well, your piece? Yeah, but there's a little bit of gluing in between. You glue it first? Right. Of course. I mean, I'm not going to duct tape it. <laughs> Once we have it in this form, this we can begin to decide if we like it or not. So. Wow. That's amazing. I love that sound. Hey, Marshall. It's just like a such a resonant boom. Right. I wouldn't have expected that from just a, I think of this as kind of inanimate. Right. But if you hold it right, how'd you do that? You have to go 22% of the length and maybe about one fifth of the way in to catch a nodal point. That is such a good sound. So what are you looking for and how do you know if it's gonna end up being a good guitar? Okay, I'm looking for resonance, I'm looking for color, I'm looking for depth of sound, I'm looking for sparkle. Basically, I'm looking for everything that you are looking for in a great guitar. In the end result. In the end result. You can't make it do what it don't got. <laughs> well, I've passed over many of these pieces of wood in the past because it wasn't what I was looking for. Huh. And I haven't used this one yet because this is not necessarily what I'm looking for, but I might be building a guitar next week that this is what I'm looking for. So do you have, do you ever have a, a piece of wood like that that makes this incredible sound where you go, whoa. And then do you like, do you ever save it for a really special instrument? No, because if I did that, I'd never use any of this wood. <laughs> I mean, I, I gotta tell you, I've built many guitars where I'll just grab the first piece off of the top of the pile because it's just a spectacular piece. Okay. And I can go digging through all of these piles, and I've really been careful to make sure that my wood collection is very well curated where every single piece is a world-class piece. It may not wow. be like master grade or what have you. I don't care about the grading system that gets used. I care about the sound, yeah. first and foremost. Sure, sure. If it looks pretty, that's a bonus, but I care about the sound. How does this, because for me that sounded amazing. How, do you, how does that rank on the spectrum of possibilities that you've heard? For me, this would, I would consider this maybe like a good, uh, I'd use this for like a spruce flight a model. Huh. So that oh, way, you think about the model even. I, yeah, I, absolutely. When I'm choosing wood, I have to have the end goal in mind. Yeah. So to me, I would start off with what's the model going to be? What's the end result? So if you're asking me to go forward, 
I, in my mind, I'm immediately thinking a spruce style flata because it's got a little bit of that boxiness, it's got a bit of that projection, it's got that deepness and that expansiveness. You're describing so many factors of, of how the wood moves, how it sounds, how it resonates that, that I've never even considered, especially at this state. I don't know why there was something that I thought you were finessing more, and I, I'm kind of amazed at how much information you are perceiving at this time. Oh, absolutely. You know, if you don't get this right, whatever tapping and whatever that I'm doing later on, yeah. that doesn't make sense because, you know, it's basically like trying to make pasta bolognese, except that you have red onions and tofu and a, a garden hose. <laughs> and you can get something that looks like it, right? but it's not going to be the right thing. Yeah. And so for me, this is this is you know this is my spaghetti. This is exactly. my, my my meat. This is my tomato sauce. This is the meal the is only as good as the ingredients. I, exactly. I, I get what, it, it makes perfect sense in hindsight. But this is you're really you're blowing my mind with the level of um, expertise that you have to acquire to do this. Uh, it's really incredible. It's a long, hard slog to get to just the basic to to understand, and you have to handle a lot of pieces of spruce and cedar and Indian rosewood and Brazilian rosewood and everything else to be able to get an understanding of the nuance because each piece is going to be slightly different and each species or each subspecies is going to be slightly different. So if I want maybe a fruitier tone, I'd be grabbing Sitka. If I want a more brilliant tone, maybe I'll be grabbing uh, some of the, the Swiss moon spruce that I have. You know, wow. So there's a whole pantheon of, of directions I can start at. Okay, where do we go from here? Well, from here, uh, we would be gluing it together. This is glued together. I've got a pencil line right up the middle. Uh, and this is the roughly finished out. And in this case, I already have a sound uh, rosette are we inlaid that? into this. So this is the rosette. Uh, I use newspaper as backing because it's friable and easy to use and plentiful around my house. This is the beautiful step with just pure decoration. Well, you... ha, ha, ha. it's actually functional. What? Yep. So the rosette actually prevents cracking from going all the way through. So I if you get the soundboard cracks on both sides yeah. of the the neck which i have had which you have had and i've fixed for you that's right uh it runs into this and if this isn't here you have a lot of pressure on the crossbar that's underneath the fingerboard and it can come across and pop up so this I is actually that's functional amazing so, uh while there are makers out there who do absolutely beautiful abstract things i always think to myself that's gorgeous i wish i had that artistic talent and then i think to myself yes but I know that mine isn't going to come apart, and this is the uh -huh. traditional method. Um, okay, so the rosette has a dual function. It's oh, beautiful, absolutely. but also it prevents the crack from going all the way, going too far, essentially. Okay, new right. information for me. This That's is wonderful. your last line of defense. Right. So, okay, so you have the rough hourglass shape. We oh, have this is a custom. Board. This is a custom uh, outline. This is the finished part? Oh, yeah. Yeah, cool. I won't, I'll skip that one. I'll, I'll buy the next one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so... Basically, this is a, a, a rough oversize. I'm going to put the braces on. On this one, I've already, uh, because this is a custom outline and this is the guitar I'm building on my channel, uh -huh. uh, this is the outline and then this one has the rough shape of the braces sketched onto it. Wow. And this one, I just kind of, uh, I decided what the sound should be and then using my knowledge of all these historical guitars, kind of did a rough sketch out. Hmm. So... Once I get ready to glue this down, uh, these braces are going to go on, these braces are going to get glued down, and then this is going to be glued to the top. Okay, so if we're thinking about that journey from, from tree to finished product, we're getting really close now. We've made it from wood selection, yep. think, listening to the sounds of the resonance, down to chopping it down, getting it very thin, two pieces together make a soundboard. Now you're going to do some internal bracing. Yep. Uh, you've done the rosette for, for protection yep. and the nice aesthetic. Yep. And uh, now essentially the rest of the guitar The rest of the together, guitar right? just kind of falls together like it was nothing. <laughs> right, creating or the box, the resonant chamber. Right. At this point, we are, we're like 90-something percent of the way there. So what's the, what are the last steps required to turn this into uh, this, if we're thinking about just this, the soundboard? From this is the, the cedar from the original chunk of wood, what has to happen? From this point, uh, 
it goes, it, this is rough sanded, so it's not fully smooth. It's going to go through probably yeah, about fair. another four to six hours of sanding. Wow. That's uh, a lot. Just to even it out in ascending grits. Is so, that a machine process or is that by hand? Oh, it's all by hand. By hand for four yeah, to six just, hours? Yeah. Then what happens? And then the magic moment. The moment you all wait for, which I'm not going to do today. You have to wait for that later. <laughs> I'm going to add the finish onto the guitar. Uh -huh. uh, and that for me is only shellac, which is uh, dissolved. It's basically bug exudation uh, dissolved in alcohol. Okay, that makes the, the, the shellac. That is the shellac. And then it is very lightly put on and add coat, add coat, keep going, keep going. Um, a great French polisher can do a guitar in 24 hours. You know, a lot of people will spend three to four weeks doing it to get it perfect. So when you see that a hand, a French polish instrument, you're looking at 40 to 100 hours of work just for that, depending on who does it. So to be clear, French polish is a type of shellac. It's, it's a, a methodology. Oh, really? It's the, the method of applying the shellac to the finish. I never, I've always heard French polish, and I always thought it was a type of finish, essentially. It's well, the, it is. It's, it, but it's the process of it's the applying process. the shellac. Yeah, you can French polish many things. I didn't realize the, uh, that. Some makers of, from the 60s and the 70s would French polish with lacquer. Huh. They don't do it anymore. <laughs> That's toxic. Very toxic. Oh, wow. Yeah, I don't recommend that. So, we go from here to, to here. there. Amazing. Yeah, absolutely. So this is all basic. This is just sanding plus that beautiful French polish process yep. you were talking about. It makes absolutely. this glassy, buttery smooth, beautiful instrument. Yeah, it makes it really super easy. Uh, this one does have a pick guard or a tapping plate. Copiador. Yes. Uh, we've got that added on uh, just because I think that there's so many great guitars that get removed from playing condition because you know we we don't want to put this on and i actually prefer guitars with this on because hmm. uh i find that for players it removes that last sense of oh, i'm gonna damage my guitar i'm not gonna play what i want to play sure so by having that there you can play with reckless abandon <laughs> perfect so I've been playing classical guitar for about 15 years uh, and have been thinking about these instruments and the technique, but you've actually blown my mind on several parts of the process here. And this is kind of what I hoped would happen is that you would demystify this for me and make it even more interesting. I mean, as much as I love guitars, I think I love them more. Now, knowing the journey that the wood takes and the expertise from someone like you that it requires to transform it into the thing that we all know and love. Well, I, if, as long as I can provide more murkiness to the water, I'm happy to do so. <laughs> Just the opposite. You've clarified so much to me, so, for me. So thank you, Marshall. What a treat. You're very welcome. Thanks for coming out. Um, I think you have a promo code for my, for my viewers. Yeah, use promo code Brandon for $500 off of any new commission off of my website. And uh, I've got a YouTube channel. Uh, I talk about this sort of stuff. It's great, check it out. This is one of his guitars, it's beautiful. We have a bunch of other videos coming out together. So as always, thank you, Marshall. Thank you. And we'll see you all next time. Hey. <laughs> Done.